Hi everyone and welcome to Expeditions Viking Preview. So this is a strategy RPG kind of game from the developer who also made Expeditions Conquistador. And this is the preview build like I already mentioned. I'm not sure how long it is and how much content it has, but we'll find out I suppose. It's not even possible to change difficulty because it's not available in the build. So let's jump into the game. And here we got character creation. Let's have a look then. What can we change? Thin, medium, large. All right. Can we randomize? Yes, we can. Let's randomize a few times to check all the possible options and what kind of characters you can make. Yeah, there's a decent amount of variety. All right, well, let's stick with this guy. Seems reasonable. Name Marbs. Why not? And that works. All right, next. And stats. So, let's have a look. Strength determines base damage with axes and swords and affects physical resistance. Strength is essential for warriors and will occasionally enable knockouts and other physical feats in dialogue. Endurance determines hit points, base damage reduction, block chance with shields, and affects stamina. Endurance is of utmost importance for frontline fighters. Finesse determines base damage with knives and spears, and critical chance with all weapons. Finesse is important to ranged characters and fast-handed rogues, and can occasionally be used for surprise attacks in dialogue. Perception determines accuracy with ranged weapons, Perception is crucial to archers and will often reveal additional information during dialogue. And Sense. Affects mental resistance and stamina. Sense is fundamental to witches, skulls and other support characters and can often be used for persuasion in dialogue. Okay then. We also got skills. Let's see. Offensive skills, weapon skills, support skills, utility skills and passive skills. There's quite a lot in here, all right. So we can pick whatever we want from the looks of it. We can also select a preset. Berserker, Warrior, Bannerman, Rogue, Leader, Healer, Hunter, Scald and Defender. Okay. So how about we go for a leader. Strong melee character with some useful support and dialogue skills. Alright, sounds good to me. And we can check the skills. Maneuvering. Governed by sense. Grants combat buffs and unlocks special conversation options. Alright. Then we got healing. Governed by sense. Heal followers during camping and combat. Amount of restored hit points depends on sense and the rank. Then we got spot trap. Tactical move. Halts the user's moves, but allows them to move through traps and attacks of opportunity without triggering them. Alright. Then we got interrupt. This ability is... Oh, it's not available in the demo. So we don't want that then. Can we remove it? Downgrade. We can't remove it, really. Okay, I mean, I can reset. I assume the demo or the preview is not very long, so we'll leave it at that. Bow, sword. And that's that. Let's check a different preset. How about Berserker? Let's see, we actually still got some utility skills here. Cooking, alright. Preserving. Support skills. Tactical move. Offensive skills. Interrupt. Also not available. Oh, I can't actually get rid of that, apparently. If I reset everything. Alright. Let's stick with the leader. Sounds good. And accept. Yes, I'm satisfied. Thanks for asking. Your father was a great warrior and a good husband. But he was not a strong chieftain to his clan. As he travels to join his brothers in the halls of Valhalla, you must take his place. 
Our clan is beset by petty squabbles. Some amongst our people would contest your claim to leadership, as they saw discord our neighbors plot against us. Gather your most trusted clansmen. Together you will face dangers which none can predict. You will be challenged on your leadership, your resolve, your wisdom. Build a ship and take your housecars across the sea. Power and strength for our clan must be sought outside the Norselands. If you show yourself to be bold, the gods will follow you into battle. Your legacy will live for a thousand years beyond your time. Our clan must prevail. So that's the intro. It is the evening after your father's funeral. When you close your eyes, the image of his blazing ship shimmers in the dark behind your eyelids. It's not a common ritual this far south, but your mother, who hails from the land of the Geats, insisted on it. Alright, well, I'll try to go through this dialogue relatively quickly. Let's see. The guests are filling into your father's, your longhouse. Your mother leans in to whisper a few words of advice before she takes her seat. You should greet each of the thanks before the feast begins, but listen well to their words. Few of them would benefit from making this smooth transition. It will be important to know where they stand. Alright then. So we can highlight all the people in here and all the objects we can interact with. What else can we do? Move the camera around. We got inventory. Not a whole lot in it. Character and skills menu. Homestead. Quest log. Take a seat next to your mother. And talk with people. Optional. Alright, well, let's talk. Your elder brother Rurik always had a penchant for music. He looks up and gives you a warm smile as you approach him. Alright. I'm well, Rurik. I know our father is in Valhalla now. Rurik smiles. You can barely hear his soft voice over the din of the feast. I'm certain he is. Odin would have to be a fool not to accept a warrior like him. How has everyone been treating you? Alright. So, let's talk with two more people. Why not? Busy entertaining the guests, not too busy to check in on you. I've had an uneasy feeling all night. Have you seen Skolles Hoskals over in the corner? I've heard stories about them. Nephia seems to be expecting trouble too, so I've decided to go easy on the mead and keep an eye out. I appreciate that, it never hurts to be careful. Speaking of which, keep an eye on the big log back there. He and his friends have been putting their heads together all night. I think he might be planning something. I'll keep an eye on him. Alright. And one more person. Let's see. Who else can we talk with? Nephia is one of your oldest friends. Your families have always been close and you grew up together in the village. She just finished pouring your mother a mug of mead. It's nice to see you out of your armor for once. You've seen my sister in this dress before, surely that's the same thing. She closes her eyes and rubs the bridge of her nose with a finger. Gods, she was so excited to see me like this. I'll never hear the end of it. Okay, what do you think of our guests? Your fellow thanks are certainly a proud and graceful bunch, even as they plot to murder you and take your lands. You think that poorly of them? Oh, I'm sure not all of them are actively planning to kill us. I have a weird feeling about Skolle, though. I doubt they call him Skull Cleaver for no reason. Yeah, probably not. Okay, so where is Euphora? 
My poor sister has a fever again. She has such a frail constitution. All this wet cold is hard on her. Mother stayed home to care for her. Alright, let's talk later. So let's take a seat. Where are we supposed to sit? Let's see. On the other side? We can talk with Skule. Skule Skull Cleaver, right, that's the guy we were just talking about. Mars, my boy, so sorry about your father. If there's anything the people of Jelling can do to aid you in these trying times, don't hesitate to ask. Okay, that's nice of you, I suppose. Tell me, what are your plans for this place? How will you lead the clan? It's too soon. I'll start by expanding our defenses. We need a new ship. That is my business. We need the favor of the gods. Okay. It's too soon. Yes, of course. You mustn't get ahead of yourself. There will be plenty of time for getting into the swing of things later. I'm sure you know I fought with your father many years ago. We were very much of a similar inclination, he and I. That man had a real taste for battle, not like his brothers. Mark my words, Marbs. True bonds are forged in battle, not bound in blood. Alright. He came to me for advice before he mounted his last journey, on account of my ties to Kaopang. I should have warned him better about what he was getting himself into. Okay. What does Kaopang have to do with it? Vikings out of Kaopang have been to the isles across the sea. I've heard many stories about it, since I often go there to trade. Your father wanted to hear if the stories were true. Ah, but I've taken too much of your time already. I know you have other guests to entertain. Perhaps we'll talk later. Yes, maybe. So hold on, where are we supposed to sit again? Quest log. Take a seat next to your mother. So, right here. Following the initial meet and greet, everyone toasts to your father and digs into the meal. Food covers every inch of the table, and the freshly brewed mead seems to flow endlessly. Okay. You're listening to Nefia's usual complaints about her mother when Ketil perks up and sleeps discreetly in out of the longhouse. Outside, some piece of pottery crashes against the ground, and men begin to shout. In short order, the door flies open and the doorway is filled by Otar Erlingson, sword in hand. Outside, you see his brothers standing over the prone form of Ketil. Otar looks around the room with disgust. Okay. Marbs, your family had its chance to earn our respect, and you wasted it. Come outside and defend your honor, or we will burn this hall to the ground. Otar, you miserable drunkard. How dare you attack your thanks honor during this during his own feast? Your family will pay for this. You have to handle this. If the other thanks think we're too weak to deal with such a blow against our family's honor. This will not stand. Okay. Are you with me? By the gods, he's going to make us kill him this time, isn't he? Alright. So, what now? Retrieve your weapons from the rug by the door. Alright then. This camera angle is a little bit weird. I can't see very well what's what. So, right here. We got some weapons. We can take all of them, I assume. And equip them, probably. Having weapons equipped is usually a good idea. Alright, looks good. And go outside. Remember to equip your weapons. Yes, I just did that, thanks. Most of the guests follow you outside and form a half circle behind you. You're dimly aware of the other things muttering around themselves. Nefia runs over to Ketil to help him back on his feet. A streak of blood runs from his hair down his cheek, but it looks like he can still fight. Alright. Otar's brother Tosta sneers. He sounds drunk. Shut your mouth, woman. He started it. Diplomacy, go home, you false. I know our families have never been on good terms. 
But if we spill each other's blood tonight, the killing will never stop. He's right, Otar. This is not what our father would want. It doesn't matter what father wants. We're here now. There is no going home with our honor. Nothing about this is honorable. I should never have come here with you. Then run. Okay. Too late for second thoughts. You're gone too far, Otar. There is no honor in this. I must take Marb's side here. Fine. We'll kill you all then. Yes, I'm sure you will. Alright, so now we actually get to fight. Let's see. How is this going to work? Looks a little bit confusing. Can we move the camera around? Yep, we certainly can. Alright, so can we pick who we want to move? Yes, we can. There's no specific order. Let's check our abilities. Signal arrow. All enemies within three hexes of the target hex get the status effect spotted. Plus 25% accuracy versus that character. Okay. I don't think it makes a lot of sense to use that now. What else? Quick shot. Make two ranged attacks at minus 50% accuracy each. Or we can just take a regular shot, I assume. We get detailed info. 95% chance to hit. 47 to 53 expected damage. 6% chance to crit. Alright. And the trained scout. Trained warrior. Let's see. Physical resist 30%. Physical resist 30%. Well, let's attack the trained warrior then. There, 51 damage. Any other abilities? Double jab. Attack an adjacent target with 50% damage, take one step back and do another attack at 50% damage. Alright. Ready, automatically attacks the first enemy that enters melee range. So basically, kind of like Overwatch. Halts the user's moves, but allows them to move through traps and attack the opportunity without triggering them. Maneuvering gives all allies one more hex of movement for that turn. And restore, which is a heal, basically. Alright. We got a stun. Target gets the status effect stunned. So we could stun this guy, perhaps. Not a terrible idea. There we go, he's stunned. And let's see if we can kill the other, that would be nice. Oh yeah, target not within range. Alright, let's just use a regular attack then. Like so. Oh yeah, that's a spear, so we can attack from two tiles away, nice. And I guess we can kill him. This should be enough damage. Yep. Alright, so there's one dude up here that looks like an archer. And he's behind some obstacle. Okay then. So that's that. We can move towards that guy. And I guess we should. We can use some cover, that's not a bad idea. Like so. And we can still move a few people. Yeah, let's move into cover. I assume that's going to be useful against the archer. That will do. Oh, he will move and then use melee? No, he will take a shot. Alright, fair enough. Blocked. That guy is not stunned anymore. Okay then. Can we see their damage? 24 to 30. Yeah, that's their damage. So the hunter will do more than the scout, which is to be expected, I suppose. Let's have a look. So, just a regular attack? We could stun him. Let's maybe do that. And then we'll kill the scout. Sounds good to me. Doesn't look like a very hard fight. But I assume this is basically the tutorial. Because that's what it is. Okay, that's that. We'll kill him on our next turn. 
Bye. It's been nice not knowing you. Victory. Combat results. Equipped items. Moderate trauma. Okay, we got some injuries. Accept. Otar Erlingson lies in the, on the frozen earth in a small pool of his own blood. His blank eyes gaze at the sky. Otar's surviving brothers are slowly getting to their feet. None of them has any fight left in them. Nefia regards the survivors with a mixture of disdain and sadness. What do we do with them? Execute them? Let them go for now. We'll deal with them another day. I mean, they just tried to kill us. They will probably try again if we let them go. Execute them. The grim work does not take long. Your guests look on solemnly as the snow in front of you as the snow in front of your feast hall turns red with the blood of the farmers. If any of them doubted your resolve before, now they see what you are made of. Well, they asked for it. That's pretty harsh. Alright. I supported you here tonight because Otar and his brothers were out of line. It is not the way of our clan to kill each other in drunken brawls. Marbs, son of Nador, I challenge you to a duel. Alright. Can you believe this son of a bitch? It's his right to issue such a challenge. His timing could be better though. Why do you challenge me? Alright. I will not fight you, I need you at my side. I don't think he's going to listen, but let's try that option. If you survive our duel, you can serve at my side. <laughs> yeah, I don't think so, buddy. If you don't wish to fight him, let me fight in your place. No. I accept your challenge. We will meet on Holmgang Island at dawn on the morrow. May the gods favor you. Alright. He's no longer following us. Something to prove. Discuss your options. Let's discuss our options then. Your mother wraps you in a warm embrace. There is a hint of tears in her eyes. Well fought, my child. Your father would be so proud. The clan is at war with itself. Was father really... Right. Nador was always more of a warrior than a leader, but he was no worse than most. This isn't really about him. It's about ambition and greed. There will be another fight tomorrow. I know. He's a skilled warrior. He would do well to make some preparations. Alright, what can I do? It may not seem like it right now, but most of our clan remains loyal to us. If nothing else, then because they'd prefer you as the leader. Go to Holda in the bog and ask for her help. She is old and wise, and she has many ways to weaken a man. It will take more than an old hag's bro to beat a slaver. Sigrid might have an idea. She is good at setting traps for the creatures of the forest. She may know of a trap large enough for a man. Other than that, this guy may be willing to give you some better equipment. You shouldn't go into the jewel with those weapons Nador gave you. Alright, so I assume we'll have all these options in the quest log. Yep. So it sounds like we should really look into getting better equipment from Kveldover. <laughs> these names, man. Alright. Well, let's take a look around then. Is there some sort of map? Yep. Can we see who's where? Not really. Okay, so we're looking for Kveldover or something like that. What's going on here? End of the feast, no. Right, that's where we go once we want to progress. But not yet. Let's look into all these optional things we can do. So. Where do we go? Looks like this is the closest place. 
we can check out. Yeah, there's the guy with equipment. The smith Kveldover has retreated to the familiar confines of his workshop, where he's engaged in an energetic discussion with his wife. They break it up when they see you coming. It's been a long time coming, seems like everyone anticipated the attack except me. It's no secret Erling has been fixing the challenge to challenge your family for years, but no one expected an attack during the feast. This is just disgraceful. I wish you hadn't had to kill them, but under the circumstances, I'm not sure how it could have been avoided. Is there anything you can do to help me? I heard. Sorry, my boy, I'm not getting involved. I've known you both since you were small children. Okay. I won't have either of your blood on my conscience. I don't plan to kill him. I just have to beat him to defend my seat. Such things rarely go according to plan. Alright. Leadership sense. In the heat of the moment, with a sword in your hand, I won't be responsible. The decision is final. Aslafer is a strong warrior. I need him and his axe to defend the clan from our enemies. But you know our clan is safer and stronger with me in charge. He does have poor head for tactics, but I will not give you steel to swing against him. However, I can help you stay safe. Here, let me get you a good sturdy set of quilted armor. It will serve you better than that shirt you're wearing. Alright, well, at least there's that. We got some armor. Thanks. So, let's have a look. There's the armor. Alright. So what else can we do? Check the bog. And ask the huntress. So right here and right here, I assume. Seems that way. Let's go. It's a shame you can't tilt the camera a little bit, because this kind of view is a little bit awkward. I don't like it too much. Sigidr is your clan's best hunter, and is married to the other full-time hunter, Lyotr. She bows her head respectfully as you approach her. Are you on my side of the dispute? Aslaif is a good man, honorable and dutiful. His family is always fair in their dealings. But your father was lax in his role, and I admired that. He may not have built a strong and fearful clan, but he respected us and put great trust in us all. I hope you'll continue that legacy, and I know Aslaifer certainly wouldn't. Okay. Is it possible to trap a man the way one might trap a bear? A trap for combat? Interesting idea. Reminds me of something your uncle told me once. He was in Nador in Gitland to fight for Sigurd, and he was tasked to ambush a group of mercenaries riding to reinforce the enemy. Okay, according to him, your father wanted to split up the riders with a surprise attack, and he had the idea of suspending strong net above the path and running the rope across the ground concealed by branches. When the first horse stepped on the rope, it came loose and dropped the net down onto the rider. Okay. That sounds ingenious, can you do it? That's so crazy, it just might work. It hinges on whether he expects a trap and how well it's hidden. I know how to hide a trap well enough from anyone. Then let's try it. Good, I'll start preparing. The worst thing that can happen is that you'll have to fight him like normal. Fair point. So, one last person. The bug. Let's see, this way. It's kind of hard to tell. Could really use a minimap around here, but it looks like we need to go this way. This way, right here. Alright. Let's go then. Actually, no, this is the wrong way. No, it's fine, we just need to cross the bridge. That looks a little bit awkward. Not quite what I had in mind. Did he just walk under the bridge? Sure, seems like it. Alright. Whatever you say. The witch's apprentice is tending to candles around an old tree. 
she stuns when she sees you. Okay. Don't talk to me like that. I'm here to see Holda. Are you sure? That isn't one of her good days. What do you mean by that? Some days she's all there, other days her mind travels. No telling where she went today, but it must be far away. Is she still fit for her duties? Let me show you. Okay then. Are we there yet? We've got visitors, Halda. It's Marv's. Come out and say hello. Well, hello. The old witch emerges from her burrow, supported by her brooding apprentice. Her knees shake with each slow step, and she wears an expression of deep concern. What are you doing home so soon? Did you decide not to go? I haven't gone anywhere. She takes an unsteady step forward. I made an offering to Thor when you left. And that same night, he struck the big willow with a thunderbolt. Wait, what? This is Marbs. Do you remember him? Of course I remember. Don't give me that look like I wouldn't remember. Why are you here? Can you make a poison for me? I told you that you would need the mixture, but you wouldn't take it. Holda. Quiet, girl. For a moment, nobody speaks. Holda's eyes bore into your long past the point of discomfort. I was hoping you could help me. Of course I'll help you. I always do what I can for you. Okay. You already said that. Don't lie, useless cow. I know what I said. I'm not an idiot. You're not well today. Your memory. Get out of here. I don't want to see you here again. Don't you ever come back here, you lying goat. <laughs> That's the third time today she's banished me forever. She'll call me back when she wets her bed again. Alright, well, I need help with a jewel. Don't waste my time. Just tell me what you want so I can be rid of you. I need a poison to weaken a man in combat. Okay. You're out of your mind. I think we're done here. I hope you get well. Alright, well, I guess that's that. So now we can go back. Talk to the witch's apprentice again. All right. I suppose we can do that. Where is she exactly? Right here. I think. This map is a little bit confusing. Can we like mark a spot or something like that? No. Apparently not. Right here. I'm sorry you had to see her this way. She's just having a bad day. That's just great. I have half the clan against me and the witch has lost her mind. If you will accept help from witch's apprentice, I may have something you can use. It's a powder. If he ingests this in the morning, he'll barely be able to stand at noon. How will I get him to eat it? I'll bring him a concoction and tell him it will make him stronger and ensure the gods will favor and ensure the gods will favor him tomorrow. Won't that make him seek revenge on you? If you win, you can protect me. Please make sure you win. <laughs> I'll try. Okay, end the feast. And get some rest for tomorrow's jewel. Alright. Well, let's go and do exactly that. This way, right? Wait, no, that's not where we should go. And rotating this camera is a little bit slow. I don't think you can do it faster. There really needs to be a minimap right here. This way. Come on, let's go. All right, and now we can rest a little bit. I think we've done everything we can. The next day, at noon. Let's see how this goes. I 
I fastened a rope over there. The log is well concealed among the branches overhead. But try to keep Aslave's attention on when he on you when he comes. Alright. If he comes, perhaps he thought better of it and decided to stay home. Or perhaps Thor will happen to drop Mjolnir from the sky and coincidentally crash Aslave's boat on the way here. He'd better show up, or I will row back and haul him out here myself. If he doesn't show up, I will have him I will have to exile him from the clan. That would be a good resolution to this whole mess, but he'll be here. The man has the stubbornness of a mule. Well, there he is. So, where exactly is that trap again? I can't quite tell. It's not very obvious, is it? Supposed to be over here, right? I don't know, I think so. Well, in any case. Let's get started. Are you ready? I guess I'm ready. Face him in the ring. We can let Nefia fight for us. No. No, I'm looking forward to teaching Asley for a lesson. Your offer humbles me, but this is my fight. As the challenger in this dispute, it falls on you to recite the rules of the duel. I, Aslafer, son of Grimvard, have challenged Marbs, son of Nador, for the right to rule our crown. The winner shall sit, blah blah blah. Yeah, we get the message already. All weapons are permitted. As the challenged, the first strike is yours to make. Alright, well, there's the poison, so that worked. So hold on. How do we lure him into the trap? Where is that supposed to be exactly? See, I'm not actually sure anymore. Let's just attack him, straight up. What do we have here? Tactical move. Halves the user's moves, but allows them to move through traps and attacks of opportunity without triggering them. Automatically attacks the first enemy that enters melee range. Gives all allies. Yeah, that's not useful. Well, looks like we'll just use a regular melee attack. What's his damage range? 45 to 52. Okay, then. This might be a little bit close. Well, let's just take a swing, shall we? There, 47. And we can move away if we want to. Alright, let's move away. He will get attack of opportunity. I'm still confused where this stupid trap is. <laughs> but whatever. Okay. Blocked. I assume we can heal ourselves, but that will use an action. Just attack him. Looks like this will be fairly easy. One more swing should do it. At least I lived with honor. Alright. Well, that's that. You've been keeping your skills sharp, even without your father around to train you. He trained us both. What do you even have against him? He was a great warrior, and like everyone else, I respected him for that. But if the king should raise an army tomorrow, how many able-bodied warriors could our clan master? A dozen? Half the women in the clan are widows, and Nador's foolhardy expeditions are the cause of it. He bangs his weapon against his second shield and gives you a somber nod. Alright. Well, why can we still move and attack? Oh, are we supposed to continue fighting? Alright. I'm a bit confused. I thought that was the end of it, but apparently not. Oh, there we go, he's entangled. I guess that was the trap then. Well, that should make our job a little bit easier, I assume. Stay where we are. It might still be a bit close. 
I'm gonna have to heal myself. Yeah, we blocked. That should do it then. Are we done yet? That was round two or whatever. Aslifer's second shield crumbles off the grip. Dismayed, he heads back to the boat to fetch his last shield. What? Okay, you are nearly as good as Nador. If you should win this, I hope you'll be a better thing. I hope to serve with you as my heart skull. Alright, let's finish this then. Tell me, how do you plan to govern us? We have become weak and we have many enemies. The defenses must be strengthened. We have let all the alliances atrophy. It's time we rebuild those old relations. I plan to govern as little as possible. Free men prosper when left to choose their own path. Right, well... Perhaps you're right. Yes, perhaps. So, same plan as before, we'll move over here. Yeah, I guess. Alright, sounds good to me. It worked the previous time, so... There we go. Okay. 47 damage. That should do it. And one more attack. Well, that was easier than I expected it to be. Are we done yet? That was round three. Is he bored yet? Your challenger struggles to get back on his feet, but he leaves his weapon in the mud. In the end, he settles for just sitting on his knees before you, his head hung as a signal of defeat. You got Roskva to poison me, didn't you? This disease was all you're doing. Though I would prefer to bow to a man who could defeat me fairly, I am at your mercy. If you accept my surrender, I pledge myself to your service. We could execute him. Yeah, let's not do that, maybe. We could exile him. Okay, we can accept his pledge. We can exile him or we can kill him or execute him. I will not have you in my clan after this. I hereby exile you. I mean, he might try something again. Accept. Alright, let's accept. Some unusual mixture of sadness and relief washes over him. He holds your gaze for a long moment. Then he seems to get back some of the energy the jewel took out of him and he stands. You show me great honor. I hope my challenge won't linger in the air, in the air between us. I want you to know you can depend on me from now on, fully. Alright. You were a fool to challenge Marvs, but I hope you learned your lesson now. And he joined us now, alright. Roll back to your homestead. This way. Back we go then. Something funny is going to happen back there. At least... That's how I feel. <laughs> the short boat ride back is uneventful. Holmgang Island is clearly visible from the shore. You return victorious. I'm glad that's dealt with. What's next? We'll have to do something about Erring Thorningson. As long as he lives, his family poses a threat. We'll head there immediately. New quest. Cling cleaning house. Okay, well, this is getting a little bit long now, so I'm going to finish this here. I don't know how much longer the preview is, but I think that's going to be enough as far as the preview goes. So thanks for watching. This was Expeditions Viking. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time.